It's Saturday. Happy Saturday to all. Can you believe this amazing weather we're having? We're in the retail store today um, as we're getting geared to teach the 10 a.m. class. So if you haven't signed up yet for 10 a.m., we have a couple of spots left and Kendall and I are teaching together. It's a lot of fun and... Uh, I think there's one spot left. There's one. One spot. One spot. Um, we are theming our class around the feminine and the masculine. Um, and not only that, but we're tying it all back into the big dream. How to, how to dream the dream, the freedom to dream the dream, the um, embracing our energetic sovereignty to dream the dream. And now we're trying to bring contrast into the different quality of energies of the masculine and the feminine. And there's no better day than Saturday to start working towards some type of big dream. Are you masculine or feminine? Um, that just depends on the day <laughs> and what I'm working through. Sometimes I'm very driven and masculine and goal-oriented and mission purpose and then some days I'm more on the creative side and, and the letting go side and, and letting things flow. Yeah, so what, what he said, um, all of us have both masculine and feminine energies within us, despite if you identify with being female or male or, or uh, dual gender, like it doesn't, it doesn't matter as humans, we all carry some of that energy and some more than others. And so I think part of our lesson... I think some of it's maybe more natural, like um, as I've gone through this process of discovering myself through yoga and our practice and everything that we do in the beginning and growing up I definitely cared more of a masculine energy because that's kind of like what was natural to me you know playing sports very goal driven um, you know there's a mission there's a purpose and you're, you're constantly moving forward towards something and so I think that in the beginning was definitely easier for me um, and I feel that for me I was very um, I softer and and just embracing the, all the feminine energy and qualities but I feel that as I started to approach my teens because as, as a society we really um, we, we idolize the, the driven and the purpose and like really more and more and more pushing pushing fire and um, and I think I started pushing down a lot of my feminine energy into that driven like oh I must do acquire and really put and manifest in this physical world. Yeah, when it comes to the household and the way things are supposed to be at home, she definitely carries more of a masculine energy. I do. I do have a lot of masculine energy. And do not wear your shoes inside. <laughs> I have a lot of fire, and it's all about like putting all into order and things like that but I think for me is remembering who I am and bringing a lot of those qualities and integrating them back again and, and allowing the softness, the vulnerable, the compassionate to work in the peripheral. So let, let me talk first about a little bit of feminine energy. It's more about living uh, holistic and in the peripheral. So that's why it's associated more with Mother Earth because it is on the outside. Like we are we are in the inside as humans and Mother Earth um, brings us all back together with compassionate and, and softness, but also very fiery. I forgot what I was gonna say, but that's a good point. <laughs> um, no. So I think it's important, like, we all resonate um, maybe closer to one than the other. Maybe we carry more masculine energy, maybe, you know, you're a guy and you carry more feminine energy. But I think the point is, is when you're trying to find balance in your life, it's also surrounding you with people that have that opposite type of energy to either one, help you create, or that you can learn from, or help spark those, that creative part, or that letting go part, or, um, and I know that I've done that in my life, and it's, you know, creating the studio, multiple studios at this point, and all the things that Monica I've done, I've learned so much from that side of her, which also it allows me to be more free because um, I don't just drop into that one mode of, of you know, mission, purpose, go forward, direction, and and that's it. I've learned to be more creative, and I've learned to tap into that part of me, but it's because I've had good teachers around me to kind of show me that and to be open to do that which creates balance in both the energies. 
And that is how you can step into creating really big dreams. Yeah, so it's to say that you can be both. You can be both determined and compassionate and grateful and vulnerable and visionary. All of those qualities are possible and some of them some of those qualities carry masculine energy. Some of those some of those qualities carry feminine energy. And it is learning on when you've gone more on the masculine side to bring more feminine side, or maybe you're too feminine on the side and you need to bring back into into a center. So it's about becoming that balanced being, the yin and the yang. But it's all, it's not just at the same time. It's like one, you can tap in one and that's what you need that moment in time. And then the other one, you can the feminine, you can tap in when you're creating something. You know, like when we're building out one of the studios, it's like, okay, hey, we got deadlines, we got projects we got to finish, and I'm jumping in, tiling showers, you know, knocking out goals, knocking out lists, moving everything forward. But in the whole process, when you're stepping back, looking at it, like, oh, this is what we want to look at, this is what we want to create, this is the flow of things, and having that creative part and dropping into that, and knowing when to use both of those parts of yourself. Right, and I think, um the um, bringing the softness into the creation is part of that balance and and being vulnerable with the creation process being grateful with the, with the manifesting process and and building the dream and and so how do how do we talk if into that balance right for for me my my yoga practice my meditation is imperative to tap into the balance of the energies and um, when when I'm too fiery, how to soothe the fire. When I'm too soft, how to bring tapas or the fire into into my life. So always seeing both aspects of the self. Um, we have a, an amazing opportunity to practice this perspective changing and maybe seeing it how it applies in your life through a 21 day challenge. It starts April 21st. We're challenging you to complete 21 classes from uh, for 30 days and then um, apply nutrition to that practice so 21 day reset ultimate reset challenge um, we have info sessions coming up about it the next one is coming up on monday at 7 30. Uh, you can join us remotely and we'll talk about more about what the challenge means yeah and the challenge itself too it's like getting to the point where you reset your body, you reclaim yourself, and you find this still place that you can create from. And it brings me back to the meditation that we, um, that I led on the Equinox, and talking about setting intentions, and also kind of tapped into you know, big dreams and stuff. And if we can't um, get our bodies the right fuel and find equanimity in our bodies and our minds, it's kind of like a pond, and when we start creating these big dreams, if we have the big dream that's the size of a pebble, we throw it in the pond, the pond's still, you can see the ripples. If we have a bigger dream, we throw it in, you can see this, the waves splash. But if there's no equanimity in the mind, and the body, and we're in pain, and stuff's all over the place, and we try to create something, you could, it's like being in the middle of the ocean, a hurricane, you can have an intention, or a dream the size of the Empire State Building, and drop it into the ocean, but you couldn't tell anything, because everything's so rocky and stuff, and so this challenge is meant to reset you physically, to, have the, um, to heal your body with nutrition um, and to find a place in mind where we can kind of calm things down and get a baseline where we can really create from a strong, still place, which kind of embodies the masculine and the feminine. And um, awesome. If you are want to embrace that and you're ready for the nude yoga, we have one spot left today at 4 p.m. Join us, maybe. And, uh, and then lastly, we have a lot of stuff happening at towards the uh, middle of February, February, wow, April. I am way behind. <laughs> middle of April, <laughs> we start teacher training, we have one spot left. We have um, um, the full moon on Aries. And these are all on the 11th. Teacher training starts on April 11th. Um, the full moon with Aries workshops, April 11th. And, um, Wool Factory. Wool Factory outdoor classes starting on the on the 11th, 9 a.m. If you didn't get the chance last year when we did this when COVID happened, it's a really amazing experience. We're in the courtyard practicing, and then afterwards you can schedule um, brunch with your friends. You're here for a walk on the river. Um, it's an amazing atmosphere, and the people who show up are awesome. 
Um, it does fill up, so I would register in advance if you do want to come check it out. All of our events are on our on our webpage. You can click down to events, and then everything is listed there. Um, we hope that you have a beautiful, beautiful Saturday. And remember, Saturday, just like any day, is the best day to create some type of big dream. I hope you have a wonderful day, guys.